So everyone should have by now, because it's been doing the rounds um, in the news for years, the Canterbury cat, which is, I don't know, like Puma that's supposedly mm. in the high country in South Canterbury. And there was a, a group of friends that decided they want uh, wanted answers, and the only way to get them was to go um, and obviously look for the answers. Uh, Tony Stewart, welcome to the show. G'day, fellas. How you doing? Yeah, Mate, the, good. The Tony Stewart, the big cat guy. When did this first pique your interest? And I know a lot of people like ourselves, myself and Dunk, uh, Bryce and the, the award-winning Morning Rumble show were dead set on this being a, a fact. So they embarked on a bit of a tour to try and track him down. At what point did it pique your interest to the level where you're like, you know what, I'm all in here? Yeah, look, um, I saw this thing probably 10, 12 years ago, bounded across the road um, in mid Canterbury. It was pretty amazing. It was very fleeting. But everyone thinks you're a bit nutter, you know. It's a bit like if you've seen a ghost or something. But I had a friend of mine um, who was asking after it. He said, oh, have you heard of this Canterbury cat? And I said, oh, yeah, I've seen it. Well, that set off a whole chain of events. So we got some mates together and um, he wanted to go find it. <laughs> a group of mates having a laugh. We're all photographers. Well, look, we'll just see what happens. What is the plan when you're starting to build this exercise? There's hundreds of square kilometres that this animal could be operating in and cover that same length in a very short amount of time. So where do you, where do you start? Do you have sort of a grouping of sightings and lay out some whiskers and hope that the big boy comes back. <laughs> look, we were just a group of mates that thought, look, we've got to pick somewhere, so let's just go and see what happens. And the chances of seeing it, next to nothing, you know, and like we thought, look, this is just the context in which we have a, a few whiskies and a bit of a shoot and yeah. go for a wander in the hills. We went to central mid Canterbury up behind the back of Rangitata River. I've seen cats and stuff there before. We're not going to give um, everything away, but you guys actually did come across something pretty interesting uh, we're around about three quarters of the way through uh, the one hour documentary that you guys have put together for this and we'll give a link out for that yeah. shortly because it's been yeah. incredibly yeah. well cut together. We flew in um, to this hut right against the spine of the uh, the Southern Alps and you know, we were filming just because we're having a laugh and stuff and went for a bit of a walk but we came across a, a set of prints that we can't explain and we're not saying it's a panther we're not saying it's a cougar or anything like that but it was big and um, there's big claws and the the footprints are sort of the size of uh, if you extend your hand with your thumb into your forefinger the, the, the sort of the footprint fits in there and and the thing is this thing had kittens there was there was oh. like an adult track with baby ones with it we actually went looking and followed these tracks and um, we actually found like a poo that had been covered there's not many animals in the high country that um, that will do this you know so those tracks ended up um, you guys figured uh, to be quite fresh because you guys buggered off for a bit and then came back and the tracks are pretty much almost gone so you reckon the cat must have been or whatever it was must have been through there not long before you guys turned up yeah, absolutely. And it was probably even watching us because when we first found the tracks, we were all a bit knackered. We'd been walking for four or five hours and um, it's really rough country. It's really hard on your feet. And we got, got to this river crossing with, oh, maybe we should go back. And as we're looking for a, a place to cross, we saw these prints. And we spent probably about an hour, hour and a half sort of following and working out where it had been and where it was going. And um, in that time that we doubled back, the wind and the breeze had eroded quite a few of the initial ones we saw. So they were definitely fresh. You know, we would have been seconds, minutes behind this thing. And it would probably oh. seen us and, and took off into the bush, you know. Have you got a theory on what that animal is and how that animal arrived here? Because it's not one of those ones that you just jam in your prison wallet when you're coming back from South America and uh, <laughs> sneak onto the plane, is it? No. Look, we don't know. And we're not saying that this is the panther. And if you speak to the dot guys, um, they will say these things are prolific in the high country. And they're doing some tracking of stuff. And um, these, these, these animals are eating birds and um, Kia and all that kind of stuff. But this poo, it's actually in the freezer. We we're going <laughs> to take it away and get it sampled. Some of the researchers are saying, you know, they've got dozens, hundreds of these things in the freezer to um, to test and stuff. They kind of think that there's a whole lot of these really big animals that are out there. I guess they once were domestic and got really big, but we just don't know. I mean, the, the size of it is, if this is a domestic cat got big, it's huge. So let's chat about what size you speculate it would be, you know, like a, a 
how far up your leg? We're guessing based on the prints. In fact, poor print fits inside sort of the area of your hand we said before. You're looking at like a like a large dog size. The baby prints we saw, we would have said that's the size of what a cat print you'd have at home, you know? Wow. Okay. So maybe there's just a whole bunch of little cats hanging out with the big bad cat. <laughs> we'll set up the keyword cat. Text that through to 3520. You get the documentary sent straight to your mobile phone. Um, who cut it together? Because shout out to them. And inc- like they've done an amazing oh, job. Incredible. That was um, good buddy Richard Wood. Um, he's a Hawke's Bay photographer who, um, previous uh, multiple winner, um, New Zealand Photographer of the Year. So we all right. shot the footage, but he did a, a tremendous job um, putting it together. Absolutely right there. Tony Stewart, mate, an absolute bloody pleasure having you on the show to, to chat about the Canterbury Cat. Um, sounds like you guys had an amazing Thanks. trip. Thanks, fellas. Well done. The Rock Drive. Coming up. Get the documentary sent to your mobile phone right now by texting CAT. Send it off to 3520 if you love your hunting. Uh, it is shot just extremely well and uh, about an hour and I watched it last night. Well worth it. I would say that Kiwis are doing probably a better job than most even globally when it comes to documenting how amazing our wide open spaces are. Mm-hmm. Uh, inspiring stuff. Next, let's get the fizz levels high for a Friday. What are your plans for the weekend, New Zealand? Let's rip the middle finger at the working week and announce your plan.